Gimme! Hello my friends, well, it's happened again. Nintendo just announced... Latest Wii U port. I know, yet another one. We must wonder if every single notable game in the Wii U's library will one day be ported to Switch. In fact, you may be watching this in just such a future. Maybe it's the year 2022, a hover car is flying by your window, you're drinking a space soda, and you're happily tapping Amiibo onto the Switch in your lap and playing Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival all by yourself. Just as we all wish we were doing right now. I mean, what the heck, Nintendo? Just give it to us already! All these ports do raise some interesting questions, though, and feelings both positive and negative. Many Wii U owners feel that porting basically every single good Wii U game over to the Switch devalues their investment. If they had known it was all heading to a much better system only a few years later, maybe they would've waited. Some feel that in a way, they've been taken advantage of, and they also feel that they were left out in the cold when Nintendo abandoned the poor little thing after a relatively short life cycle. In an industry where seven years per console is looking to be the new norm, the Wii U only went about four and a half, and it felt even shorter due to the Switch overshadowing it during the last year and a great lack of compelling late-life releases. So then, the question today is, were Wii U owners cheated by Nintendo? Were they unfairly abandoned? Was Nintendo doing the right thing when they jumped the sinking Wii U ship and left those 14 million people, myself included, to flounder? Join me as we discuss all this and more tonight on Arlo Stuff. It is no secret that I'm a pretty big fan of Wii U ports on Switch. In fact, I did an entire video defending the practice. Card popping up in the corner right now if you haven't seen it. There's no need to reiterate every point, but the gist of it is as follows. Porting a game takes a small fraction of the development resources required to make a new game, so it is basically fact that a game being ported takes nothing away from anyone. Even if Nintendo strategically uses ports to fill out their release schedule, no games are going completely MIA simply because Nintendo's like, let's just port an old game and not even make that new one. Five ports in a year is just five fewer games we have to make. No, I'm sure Nintendo is making just as many games now as they originally planned to, and these ports provide very welcome options for Switch owners. The Wii U didn't sell so well, so naturally it makes sense to let people enjoy the games they might have missed out on. Ports provide options, and say it with me, more options is always better. More options are always better? More options be always better. I don't know, point is, ports are good. And there's no doubt, from a business perspective, these ports make all the sense in the world. Nintendo spent tons of money on all these games and barely anyone got a chance to buy them. The company lost a lot of money in the Wii U era, so this is a great way for them to recoup some of their losses. Heck, these ports are performing so well that I wouldn't be surprised if they were recouping all of their losses, at least when it comes to development budgets. The amount Nintendo might have lost in overall R&D and marketing for the Wii U is impossible for this old monster to calculate, and it's no doubt a substantial sum, but I'm sure the excellent sales of these ports are helping ease that pain considerably. But the point of this video isn't only to talk about ports, but also Nintendo's decision to leave the Wii U behind. And we're not just looking at Nintendo's actions from a business perspective, but a somewhat personal perspective as well, even a moral one. Really, this is a PR issue, which might not have anything to do with money directly, but it can indeed be related to the overall success of a company, especially a company like Nintendo. There's some businesses that have no qualms with wringing every last penny from their customers and plugging their ears whenever those customers get mad. As long as the money's coming in, they feel like they did their job. Nintendo, however, is different, which is why the business and personal perspectives are sort of tied together. One, despite their pursuit of money, the main dudes at Nintendo seem to genuinely enjoy making video games, which is all the more obvious when you consider that they could have gone full mobile with the company years ago and made way more money than they're probably making now. Two, unlike the CEOs of certain unnamed mega publishers who recklessly and unsustainably suck up revenue without caring one iota about how they're damaging their brand, damaging the lives of their employees, and driving driving their companies toward a cliff. Nintendo strives to do right by the customer and is interested in long-term loyalty. They don't always hit the mark, but it's obvious that genuinely happy customers is their goal. Again, if that weren't true, when their consoles stopped reaching the casual crowd, they would have thrown us all under the bus entirely and chased that crowd onto their smartphones, never bothering to so much as look back. Unlike those other publishers who will toss away a property or even an entire studio the second it's not making as much money as it's economically 
impossible to make, Nintendo is happy with investing in massive games and games that will only end up being modest successes because darn it, they just like to make games. Games is what they do. Because of all this, I'm certain that they were perfectly aware of what ditching the Wii U meant for their customers. I mean, there's no doubt about it. If you sell your products and some of your customers end up feeling cheated by your actions, that is not a good thing. That is not desirable, and I'm sure the folks at Nintendo generally want to avoid that happening as much as possible. What they did, abandoning their failing system and releasing a fancy new one in record time, was something of a calculated risk. They knew that some people would feel upset by the move. But if you look at the alternative, that risk was just as big, if not bigger. Their only other option was to stay the course and double down on developing for the system they had. At the time, Nintendo was experiencing some massive internal shifts, which led to some freshly altered mindsets, which is, of course, one of the reasons the Switch has done so well. Imagine if they'd stuck with the Wii U, but still still change their overall direction. Imagine if Breath of the Wild stayed a Wii U exclusive, and Super Mario Odyssey came to the system, as did every other exclusive. And maybe instead of making Smash Ultimate, the team released a huge slew of additional updates and DLC for Smash 4. What if Nintendo also waited long enough to be able to discount the system a fair amount, maybe even selling it at a slight loss and planning to make the money back in software sales? Between those big games, a cheaper price, and a brand new marketing angle, it is indeed possible that the Wii U's fate could have turned around. I doubt the thing would have ever gotten really big, but maybe it could have ended up being a reasonably profitable little system. So how did Nintendo go about making their decision? Well, sometimes when you're trying to decide between two options, you've got to look at the best case and worst case scenarios for each option. So what was the best case scenario with continuing to develop for the Wii U as their primary system? I mean, it's technically possible that it could have somehow become a big hit with some more pushing, but it's unlikely enough that I wouldn't consider it much of a realistic best case. More likely Likely, the best case scenario for the Wii U would have been, like I said, the system becomes a modest success. And considering opportunity cost, the idea that if you're putting your resources into something, you're not putting them into something else that could potentially be better for you, a modest hardware success can often be seen as something of a failure for a big company that has the potential for huge success. So that wasn't a particularly enticing best case scenario, I'm sure. And the worst case? They dump all their eggs into the Wii U basket and the whole thing drops. They continue to hemorrhage money despite all the new games and marketing and company changes, their stock values crash, and in the end, the 3DS is the only tiny little thing keeping them on life support. Very much not a good outcome. But what about ditching the Wii U early and moving everything over to the Switch? What were the best and worst case scenarios there? The best case scenario was... Well, we're seeing it right now. The Switch captivates people with its concept thanks to a fresh, effective marketing campaign. The great games seal the deal, Switches fly off the store shelves just like Wii's did way back in the day, and the people at Nintendo bathe in Scrooge McDuck-style swimming pools. Worst case scenario? Well, see, again, we've got a technically possible, though not super likely one. Yeah, technically the Switch could have sold as badly as the Wii U, or maybe even worse, and Nintendo could have tanked harder than ever, losing so much money that they were forced out of the hardware business, lest they should literally destroy themselves with yet another failure. Thing about that is though, I think Nintendo knew that they had something good on their hands. I mean, there was always the chance that the Switch wouldn't quite connect with people like it's doing now, but it doesn't take an analyst to see that it's just a better system with better marketing and games with wider appeal. If the Wii U sold 14 million units, it was almost guaranteed that if Nintendo turned their concept of a handheld console hybrid into a reality and fulfilled the vision they had for it, it was going to be significantly more successful than at least the Wii U. So even if tech Technically, the worst case scenario for the Switch was crashing and burning. Practically, the worst case scenario wasn't so bad after all. It was like an okay success. Maybe like GameCube success. When it came down to it, sticking with Wii U had only a modest best case and a devastating worst case. Creating the Switch and jumping onto it had a stellar best case and a worst case that was probably still pretty okay. Then you have to consider that the Wii U was already a failure, whereas the Switch idea was new and had a lot more raw potential. One option meant trying to fix something that was broken, and the other meant building something new. And new is obviously a very desirable thing for a business. It means breaking free of the old failures and starting fresh. So in my eyes, they made the decision they had to make. But make no mistake, the customer satisfaction aspect was probably taken into consideration, like I said. They told us all that it was their goal to make Wii U owners feel like their purchase was worth it in the end. And to me, that feels like pretty darn good evidence that they were at least aware of the issue, even though 
though their actions didn't really reflect on that promise. The final days of the Wii U were lackluster, too many of the titles felt like filler, and while Nintendo generally continues to support a system for at least a while after its successor comes out, in this case Nintendo officially ceased all development entirely and made Breath of the Wild the system's last game. Hey, maybe they honestly thought they'd done enough, but I think it's more likely that it would have been far too much work to truly satisfy all those customers. The whole point of their shift to the Switch was to get away from the Wii U, so they needed all hands on deck making the Switch the best little system it could be. After the lackluster launch of the Wii U, the Switch needed to dazzle right out of the gate. If they hadn't put everything they had into it to really get it moving, it might have all been for nothing. And during that big push, Nintendo knew that they were leaving behind some unsatisfied customers. Obviously, plenty of people were completely happy with their Wii U's, but plenty of others weren't, and plenty of the ones who were happy would soon hear the news of all the ports Nintendo was planning on bringing to the Switch. Having at least some disappointed customers was something that was going to happen in either of the Switch's scenarios, failure or success. I'm sure they didn't make the decision lightly, nor did they feel good about the people who would be upset by it, but if they decided that the Switch was the way to go, then the Switch was the way to go. That was what they had to do. I very much understand where people are coming from when they find themselves disappointed by this whole thing. And you know what? I've been lumping them all together, but when you think about it, there are different kinds of disappointment a person might have in this situation. Someone might look at all these ports and be disappointed that the Wii U they spent their hard-earned money on has become less valuable because you can get most of the games on Switch now. Maybe they're jealous that they're not playing all these games on Switch instead, but they don't want to buy everything a second time. Maybe they don't care about the ports at all, they're just mad that Nintendo abandoned the Wii U so quickly without giving it a full life cycle of dedicated development. Or a person might just be disappointed that the Wii U was what it was. They might not care that its games got ported or that it was abandoned. They might just care that the thing didn't get better games in the first place. If you know me, you'll know that I found myself in that last camp. I just didn't think the Wii U had a whole lot of exciting games, especially since I wasn't really into multiplayer at the time. I bought the Wii U under certain assumptions, which I know is never a good idea, though in my slight defense, when you've been buying products from a company for decades, making assumptions is kind of a natural thing to do. Whether or not it was wise to assume anything though, assume I did. I spent 350 bucks plus tax on the thing and sat back waiting for the games to roll in. I expected to get an exclusive Zelda but they took so long making it that it ended up not being exclusive at all. I expected to get the next 3D Mario game and for it to be the biggest, coolest Mario ever, a triumphant leap into the HD era. But instead, I got a simplified, multiplayer-focused Mario without a very strong thematic identity. I expected at least one Metroid game of some sort, considering the GameCube and the Wii both got two Metroid games, but instead, I just didn't get a Metroid game of any kind. Then, of course, instead of an Animal Crossing game, I got Amiibo Festival. I got a Star Fox game that I absolutely hated every moment of. I got a Paper Mario game in the form of a sequel to Sticker Star, the game that basically ruined the series. There were were games I enjoyed on the system, don't get me wrong, and as I've said before, it was almost worth it just for Pikmin 3 alone because I love Pikmin that much. But before the Switch was announced, I remember feeling like it would take an awful lot for Nintendo to get me to buy a system on day one again. For lack of a better word, I did feel cheated. As a person in the just plain disappointed that the Wii U ever happened camp, my disappointment has since been tempered in a few ways. While part of me is still a little mad that I bought a system I didn't end up enjoying very much, that disappointment gives way to relief and joy because of the fact that Nintendo eventually turned around. It's easier for me to move past my disappointment when I'm just happy that they released a system as cool as the Switch and I get to play it. They've corrected a huge number of their past mistakes and in many ways this is a very exciting new era for the company. When I look back at the Wii U, yeah, I'm a little bummed about it, but it's also kind of an it happens kind of thing. You know what I mean? Like, it happens. Sometimes you gotta fail in order to learn and grow, and if the Wii U was what Nintendo needed to become who they are today, then so be it. And it's also easier to move past it all when I examine the business side of things, as I've been doing in this video. I didn't agree with all the decisions they made in the Wii U era, and indeed many of them ended up being objectively, economically bad decisions, but I can see where they were coming from as a business. I can see the reasoning, even if I think the reasoning was wrong. And ditching the Wii U early instead of actually trying to turn it into a more worthy product? 
like I said, it made all the sense in the world. That was when everything started to go right. So I'm certainly not gonna sit here and hold a grudge over it. But what about the people in the other camps? Should they feel upset about Nintendo porting all the best games from the Wii U over to the Switch? Should they feel that their purchases have been devalued? Should they feel abandoned? Moving forward, should they feel hesitant to purchase Nintendo games because they're just gonna be ported over to an even better system in a few years anyway? Well, I'm not gonna tell anyone not to be upset. I know I often feel a way about a thing and a lot of other people just don't get it. Take my disappointment with the Wii U, for example. Some people think I'm just crazy. It had so many good games, how could I not be satisfied with it? Really, it's a bit of a murky thing. I do feel that Nintendo was acting in their own best interest and that sometimes tough decisions do have to be made by a company. But at the same time, Abandoning the Wii U so quickly was a pretty lame thing to do to the people who actually enjoyed their Wii U's. Like I said, there's no getting around the fact that disappointing customers is not a good thing. I won't call out a person for being miffed at the company because I can understand that these kinds of things can damage trust in a company. I didn't want to trust Nintendo again either after the Wii U. I ended up falling in love with the Switch and its games and of course I wanted to be playing all the latest stuff because my channel really started to take off around that time, but plenty of other other people are in very different positions than me and of course have very different priorities and tastes. If you're mad at Nintendo and you feel betrayed and abandoned and all that, I respect that. I'm always for calling a company out when they deserve it and making your voice heard, or at the very least voting with your wallet if you don't feel you can trust a company or product. But alas, I don't feel the same way. I've already made it clear that Nintendo making the better business decision makes sense and I'm just relieved that they've got a great system with great games on it again. That's all been the point of this whole video. But if I might address a few more specific issues. To the people who think that porting games to the Switch devalues the Wii U, yeah, maybe that's true in a literal monetary sense, but I really don't see why that matters or why <laughs> Nintendo should care, if I'm honest with you. Pride of ownership of a failed outdated system is not as important as customers having access to good products and a company making money off of them. There are just so many benefits to these ports right here and now that keeping the games on Wii U just so the few people who bought Wii U's can feel like they have something unique seems kind of ridiculous to me. I won't preach at you for too long, but I am a big proponent of porting everything to everything. In the end, I think the most important thing is games. Not what platform they're on, not what kind of media they're delivered on, not their resale or collector's value. It's games. Playing games. Make a game and people get to play it? Great. Port it to another system so more people get to play it? Even greater. Port your games to every subsequent system until the end of time. Who cares? That's just more and more and more people who will get to enjoy and continue enjoying your game. Having to rebuy it each time, of course, becomes an issue, but that is very much a discussion for another day. And if you're going beyond money and just saying that games losing their exclusivity actually sours your experience with them, I really can't help you there. You still played and enjoyed the games. Other people getting a chance to enjoy them should not have an effect on the enjoyment you already got from them. I already made this joke in my video on ports, but that's called elitism and it's not a healthy thing. Furthermore, to the people who are nervous about buying a Switch because they don't want the same thing to happen again where Nintendo up and abandons the system and ends up porting all their games to an even better system, one, they're definitely not gonna abandon the Switch anytime soon because this is a purely different situation. They have something great here and they're gonna wanna keep it going as long as they can. And two, you know what? It is very much possible that they'll end up porting the entire Switch library over to whatever comes next. And you might end up wishing you'd just waited for that one instead because that system lets you play handheld and with smell of vision and you don't want to have to buy Super Mario Odyssey again just so you can see what Bowser smells like but that's a business man if you worry about that stuff you'll never buy a system again just buy games and enjoy them I used to obsess over things like the resellability of my games and how 10 years from now if I sell this game I might get five dollars for it if it still has the case and I don't want to play this series because a remastered collection might potentially come out someday in some universe I don't know what happened, but I finally reached a point where I was just like, I'm just gonna play some games for Pete's sake. I'm gonna buy and enjoy some games. I'm gonna live in the moment and just have some fun. I mean, hey, you can still obsess about that stuff if you want to. People have fun in different ways, but all these ports on Switch definitely don't worry me about the future. Even if everything on the system gets ported to something else in a few years, I'm playing these games now on my current Switch. And to me, that's what matters most. In fact, if 10 years from now, I'm still able to play Super Mario Odyssey on whatever current Nintendo system I have, I will be quite 
quite pleased. So for the people who skipped to the end because they just wanted to know what my conclusions were, was Nintendo wrong to abandon the Wii U like they did? Were Wii U buyers cheated? Well, sort of yes and no, but mostly no. It was something of a frustrating issue. It definitely made for some yucky feelings. Things would have been better if none of it had to happen. But if you ask me, after the mistakes Nintendo made with the Wii U, which were products of Nintendo's own internal problems, what happened was what needed to happen. They weren't gonna get out of a situation that muddy without some stains. But because they were willing to make those hard decisions, they're at a new high point today. They're in a new era of profit and audience satisfaction and blah, 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 praise, 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 what else is new coming from Arlo? And I personally, Personally, would have never wanted Nintendo to put all this new success at risk by spending a ton of money trying to appease my temporary disappointment. If they ever go full mobile because it will make them filthy rich for minimal effort, then no, I won't like that. And when they mess up on something, generally I do like it when they make up for it in some way. But sometimes asking someone to please everybody is asking too much. Even if the Wii U left me a little miffed, I'm happier than ever that they ultimately made the right choice for most people and moved past it. So that's how I feel, but I am particularly interested to hear what you think about all this. Are you a Wii U owner who still feels angry at Nintendo? Are you simply relieved that the Switch is so much better than the Wii U, like me? Have you never touched a Wii U in your life, but you sure are glad you can play Tropical Freeze on your Switch regardless? Are you not really a fan of video games at all, but you accidentally clicked on this video when you were looking for a very specific video of a ringneck parakeet giving kisses to its babies? Whatever the case, be sure to let me know down in the comments. Especially if you find that video. Cute animal videos give me life.